Hi, I'm Dan McGrath. I'm the product lead for Google's NoSQL databases. And I'm here in this session to give you some insight into modernizing your HBase workloads with Cloud Bigtable. But before we get into that, I want to give you a quick introduction into Cloud Bigtable. And if you're already familiar with it, talk about some of the recent additions to the service. And to kick that off, I'm going to give you a little bit of trivia that you might not have heard before, because this year, 2020, marks 15 years of Cloud Bigtable being in production here at Google. We've spent a lot of time in that 15 years optimizing Bigtable from the experience of running everything from small zonal workloads to our largest and most demanding workloads with deployments spanning the globe. Here is a diagram from a design doc from one of those very first deployments of Cloud Bigtable showing a replicated system across three regions. It was the following year in 2006 that Google released the Bigtable white paper leading to the development of HBase. After being in production for 10 years, Cloud Bigtable was released so companies outside of Google could benefit from the same technology used here at Google. And to make it easier for developers, HBase compatible client libraries backed by Bigtable were also released. Now, Cloud Bigtable is a fully managed NoSQL document service for use cases where low latency, random access data, scalability, and reliability are very critical. It seamlessly scales from your first gigabyte to data sets that are at petabyte scales. It can handle millions of queries per second. And as a fully managed service, it allows your team to be freed up from database and infrastructure management tasks allowing them to dedicate their time to where the business can add value. It's completely compatible with the existing Apache HBase setup, enabling seamless migrations for existing HBase workloads. Now, Bigtable offers you a database that provides speed, scalability, a fully managed foundation, and integration in the Google Cloud and Apache ecosystem as its core base. On the speed front, it does give you consistent 99th percentile low latency for random access reads and writes. It's the same technology that powers a range of billion user Google services, and it's proven in applications with millions of database accesses per second. It easily scales to match user needs with no downtime. It's a perfect fit for real-time storage and analysis of huge amounts of data. One of the really nice things about Cloud Bigtable is it gives you consistent performance as your workload grows. It can be easily scaled by simply adding nodes or even removing nodes within the UI or command line interface. It offers seamless cluster scaling. So dynamically adding and removing these nodes can be done without restarts. And the storage system automatically scales as well. So you only pay for the storage that you're actively using. Through the separation of processing and storage, Cloud Bigtable is able to automatically configure throughput by adjusting the association of nodes and data. In the rebalancing example in the middle, if node A is experiencing heavy load, the routing layer can move some of the traffic to a less heavily loaded node, improving overall performance. Resizing in the third example comes into play when a node is added, again, ensuring balanced load across your nodes, ensuring best overall throughput of the system. It also offers zero touch failover for high availability and a range of other use cases. Bigtable enables you to write once to a single replica and have it automatically replicated everywhere with eventual consistency. There are no manual steps to ensure consistency, repair data, or synchronize writes and deletes. It gives you the ability to have a configurable topology and policies on how to route data, both by the read and write side, to different replicas. Common use case for the replication system are high availability for your live serving apps, or perhaps workload isolation, where you have both user serving and batch workloads running against the same database. It's also great for a use case where you want latency optimization to write locally to a replica closer to you, 
but then be able to read that data everywhere, perhaps in some centralized replica where all your batch processing happens. So let's quickly talk about some of the recent highlights. Now, on the fully managed side, Cloud Bigtable integrates into Cloud IAM for user access and authentication. At the end of 2019, we announced table-level IAM, allowing you to have more granular rules on who can access data within clusters. We also announced multi-region replication to enable you to replicate data across the globe, as well as a host of new regions that rolled out to support Cloud Bigtable. Earlier this year in 2020, we also announced single node production instances. So historically with Cloud Bigtable, you are required to have three nodes to be able to be supported by the service level agreement. Now you can have a single node supported by the same SLA that gives you 99.9% .9 availability for single cluster routing or 99.99% availability for multi-cluster routing. Something that I'm really excited about that we're just announcing now in July 2020 is the addition of managed backups. So managed backups give you a fully automated method to back up the tables within your cluster and then very quickly restore them either into the same instance or perhaps you want to restore them into a development or QA cluster for ease of testing. Now let's have a look at how you can think about modernizing both your existing and new HBase workloads with Cloud Bigtable. I like to think about it in terms of two different paths. One is the backward looking path of why you want to modernize. And this is where you're currently struggling to maintain the availability of your system. Perhaps you've had durability issues or perhaps performance when scaling the system has been, become toilsome for your team. And so an example of this is where you're struggling with stability at scale or during peak load events, or you'll consider the operational load on your SRE and DevOps teams too distracting from the overall core work that you're trying to do. Perhaps the overhead of managing the replication system, repairs, and the data garbage collection system has also become too toilsome for your team. Cloud Bigtable gives you a great way to automate away a lot of those troubles. The other path where people typically look at modernization is forward looking. So they want to move up the stack and have the development teams working on something that's more focused on the differentiators that the company offers. They want to spend less time and money managing the complexities of a distributed database and have more time to focus on what was not previously possible to prioritize. The really good thing about looking at Cloud Bigtable with HBase is you'll find most of the concepts map very seamlessly between the two systems. Uh, and that's obviously because of the shared history both Bigtable and HBase have had for a long period of time now. So all the fundamentals are gonna be the same for you. If you know how to design schemas on HBase, you're gonna be pretty good at designing them on Cloud Bigtable row keys, column families, column qualifiers, cells, they're all going to be the same on Cloud Bigtable. Even the cases where there are some differences in the feature sets that are available, such as namespaces, you will find ways to simulate them within Cloud Bigtable using things like row key prefixes. Now, some of the terminology you're used to, such as regions, are going to be slightly different. We call them tablets in Cloud Bigtable. Very similar though, the really good thing though is all those concerns are automated and fully managed for you. So you don't really need to worry about them anymore. Similarly, things like snapshots, that's now available as managed backups. And tasks like compaction, so you can't configure that but it is automatically managed for you. So there's no maintenance work you need to do on the compaction garbage collection size. All in all, Cloud Bigtable supports HBase client libraries from 1.0 through to 1.3, so you should find the development environment very familiar for you. Now, if you look at the architecture of Cloud Bigtable, you'll see a lot of similarities here as well. For replicating data, replication to other clusters can send different types of traffic to different clusters. So we have a way to set up policies through a thing called app profiles that talk about 
how failover happens and how you want to re how you want to route your reads and writes on the system. Scaling is very simple in Cloud Big Table. It's as simple as adding nodes or even removing nodes within the UI or command line interface. A table is automatically sharded into blocks of rows called tablets. And this is all managed behind the scenes. We use a bunch of heuristics around total data size and traffic to do this for you. One of the really interesting things is on the storing side, this is an automatically scaling storage system as well, where they're stored encrypted at rest on disk. And even if you're only running a single node of Cloud Bigtable, rest assured that your data is durable across multiple machines. Now, when you're looking at migrating your existing workloads into Cloud Bigtable, the first step is always around preparation and planning for the migration. So typically, you want to going to do a deep dive into the different use cases that you're running on HBase, and perhaps you'll go down a different path for different types of use cases. It's really good to build up an understanding of Cloud Bigtable and where some of the concepts and capabilities might differ and what the alternatives are. So you want to map concepts, schema design, queries, and how you're thinking about data consistency from HBase to Cloud Bigtable. Now, there are some slight differences in supported functionality between HBase and Cloud Bigtable. We have documentation on this, so I encourage you to read through the documentation and have an understanding of where those differences may lie early in the process. Now, depending on the use case, you could end up going down a variety of different paths. Some of them you will find incredibly easy. Some of them might require some more planning up front. So we're going to look at the four different types of workloads and each of the different migration strategies, and we'll walk through them all. So let's start with batch load and fast serve. In this specific migration path, we only have a single writing component, and this simplifies things a lot. So this is a batch job that might be refreshing data periodically, such as models that you're serving out, but then you're using HBase to have that fast serve capacity for that data that's been written into the system. Now, the obvious first step here is to update the batch job to write into both HBase and Bigtable at the same time. Once this is done, now you can spend some time verifying the batch job to make sure that it's writing the same information into both systems. After this is done, we can roll out a change to the API layer that is reading from HBase to also support reading from Bigtable. Once you're happy with the performance of the system, you can cut over to reading purely from Bigtable and then update your batch jobs to stop writing into Bigtable. At that point in time, once you're happy with the performance, you can start decommissioning your old system. Now, when downtime is acceptable, this really simplifies things. And this is by far the most common migration path we see. It works for all types of HBase workloads, as long as you can accept a short downtime. And the downtime will depend upon the size of the data that you have in the system. So obviously, at this point, you stop writing into HBase during the migration window. A slight difference, depending on your type of workload, you could leave the system in a read-only state, or perhaps you bring down the entire system for maintenance. You'll then batch copy the data from HBase into Bigtable, and we have things like data flow jobs that can read sequence files and do fast loading into Bigtable for you. Then you want to switch over your serving path from HBase to Bigtable and perhaps do some calls to check between the two systems to make sure they're in a consistent state. At that time, you can exit your maintenance window and resume writing, but now into the Bigtable system. A more complex migration is where you're migrating with the system online, but your data has a time to live. And so this is a common workload pattern where you're using Bigtable for something like more persistent caching, or perhaps you have data set that has a natural cycle, perhaps it's updated every day and recalculated. So what this allows you to do is to have the code that writes updated to write into both HBase and Bigtable with the same time to live information. You then simply wait until the time to live of all previous data in the system has expired. At this point, HBase and Cloud Bigtable should be in sync. You can run verification to make sure everything's performing as expected on the right path. Once you're happy with that, 
you can update the read side to start reading from Cloud Bigtable. Wait for the information to finish expiring from HBase once you start writing into it, and then you should be safe to decommission your existing system and you've migrated without downtime onto Bigtable. The last one, and this one is more complicated. This is where you're migrating a workload that has persistent data without downtime. And so once again, the first step here is updating the write layer of the system, but you're also gonna to wanna to look at the read layer of the system. Once you've got the updates writing to both HBase and Bigtable, you want to run a verification that that's happening correctly and start batch copying all the existing information that's in Bigtable. Once you've migrated all the information, your two systems should be in sync. You can then migrate the read workload, verify performance of the system, and start decommissioning the old system at that point in time. Now, this one can take a little bit longer because you have to have both the dual writing up front and then the backfill operation. So it's sort of a combination of some of these previous approaches. Now, perhaps HBase isn't the only type of workload you've got. So if you've got Cassandra as well, which is also very similar to Cloud Bigtable, I highly encourage you to tune into our session on migrating Cassandra workloads into Cloud Bigtable. And if you've got DynamoDB, we have another session that talks about migrating that into Bigtable and Cloud Spanner. You can also watch Cloud Bigtable in action through our showcase demo done in partnership with Spotify. I really encourage you to look at that demo. And if you want to get hands on and try it yourself, we have the quick labs for Bigtable that you can go through, get some hands on experience. And there is also the HBase to Bigtable migration guide, which walks you through some of the technical steps here, commands to run and tooling that's available. So I want to thank you for tuning into this session on modernizing HBase for workloads. I hope you got something out of it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you move to a more managed future.